All right. I have had the Cantec JDT 75 automatic dovetailer for about four years. Um, the setup on it is horrific. The, the directions are not in English, they're not in Chinese. If you understand Chinese, maybe it's better, but I don't. So I basically had to teach myself how to set this thing up and there's nothing on the internet to make that easier for anybody. Uh, first thing I want to go over is fit choices. We use 5 8 solid material for all of our drawers. Um, we are using the, it's part number CAN JDT 75-3W bit. It's a solid carbide two flute and we've had pretty reasonably good luck with it. I tried the bit that came with it. I ordered a bunch of those extra bits. I wasn't a fan of how they cut. Um, Possibly it was because I didn't have the machine set up well enough for that tool. Uh, we tried a single flute from Grizzly. I wasn't a fan of that one either. Um, and I think there was a third one that we tried as well. But the solid carbide one was the most expensive, obviously, because the good, the stuff that works is never the cheapest. Um, that's just not how life works. Uh, so that's what we had the best luck with. The one that comes with the machine, they actually, it says right on it, plywood. I'm guessing that's all backwards because I'm using the front camera on my phone. Uh, but the bit that comes with it, they recommend for plywood. We've only done a handful of plywood drawers and that was actually just for some shop projects. And the solid carbide bit did just as well with that as it did with anything else. Next thing I wanted to talk about was the adjustments. Um, I probably should wait for that to last because I've got my phone propped up on a quick grip right now off of one of the workbenches, but we should probably go through it. Um, the adjustments that you have, you have adjustment for speed of how quickly the fingers pick up and cycle the tool from right to left. Uh, and that is underneath this panel, which you can barely see. It's the front panel, there's six bolts holding it on. It's an absolute nightmare to get that motor loosened up and moved around. Uh, but the slowest speed is what worked the best for us. I'm going to grab the phone here. Okay, for the gross adjustment up and down, you loosen these two bolts right here and then turn this either, uh, I'm guessing right makes it go up, left makes it go down, and that'll give you a gross adjustment for your quill assembly. To fine tune how tight the joint is, You can just barely see it there. There's a zero. Shading it doesn't help. There we go. There's a zero and a plus and a minus. And rotating that bit, so the actual where the bit mounts is not drilled perfectly centered on the spindle. Um, it creates a wobble, which is intentional. And rotating the bit, There's too much stuff in the way. Rotating the bit will change where this outside point is as far as the apex of the cut goes. And that's how you can fine tune the fit to get it kind of exactly where you want it. I must have bumped the stop button. Uh, so I'm just gonna start over with one of the other adjustments. <clears throat> and that's for your pins and tails. Uh, in the front here, there's a spot to put an Allen key. There's two places and there's two adjustments there. The one adjustment is for basically, a, and I never remember which one's a pin and which one's a tail. Um, so it's adjusting this distance, how far this comes into the board, into the workpiece from this edge. So you could theoretically adjust this way back. Uh, I like mine a little bit chubbier because that's basically the clamp that's holding your drawer together while your glue dries. And the other screw. I don't remember which does which, but one of those uh, adjusts this depth. So when I when I actually tap my parts together, like right now, I can't even squeeze those together. We use an air hammer, like the type you use for putting T-edging on laminate countertops to assemble our drawers. I like to have it so my side is sitting just, just down just a hair, just enough so there's something to sand out all of the end grain well. Uh, fences. So when it comes from Cantec, it's going to come with these plastic fences for your stops on both sides. 
and these plastic ones are garbage. Uh, when they get tightened up, they expand and they just, you can't get them square, you can't get them straight, they change shape, they're terrible. Uh, when I initially set up the machine when I was first fighting it, I actually took and jointed the one edge to get it straight, but it didn't matter, it just, it's crap. So my solution for that was I just cut new fences on the CNC. They're basically a copy of the plastic ones, except for I didn't hog out as much material here. Just, there's no reason. These are cheap. You can make them out of a piece of garbage. Save the program. If they get chewed up, you can run them again. The set that we have on there now, I did that, I don't know, not that long ago. We probably ran a few hundred drawers, maybe 500 drawers across it, something like that. And they're holding up as well as they need to hold up. Um, I did make them a little bit longer. Makes indexing the part a little bit easier when you are putting your parts into the clamps. Uh, the clamps, I usually have the, when the clamp, the pneumatic clamp is fully retracted, I've got about an eighth of an inch of space in between the, the workpiece and the clamp when you slide them in. Uh, sometimes you're loading your front and back before you're loading your side, so I just like to shove it in there and just let it hang at an angle. And now my phone's ringing. All right, semi-important phone call, but I think I left off with the clamps. Uh, I don't think anything needs to be covered on the clamps any more than that. So we did the fences, set up boards. That's the next thing. Um, so Cantec says that the pins and tails are on a one inch increment, and that is a lie. Uh, it's actually 25 millimeters, it's not 25.4 millimeters, and that was causing some issues with how I like to set the machine up, because I was always getting this little tiny remainder left over that didn't make any sense. Uh, we still build all of our drawers on one inch increments, so like, we use two and an eighth, three and an eighth, four and an eighth, five and an eighth, blah, 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 blah. Um, so it really, it, 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 it's, it's off, but it's off by a tiny amount where as with the finished product, you never see it, but when you're trying to set it up, it does matter and it makes a little bit of a hassle. So what I did also on the CNC was I made a pair of setup boards. I made a, you can't really see it. I scratched in some letters with a V tool. This one says, <coughs> excuse me, this one says back setup board and this one says front setup board. So this one goes in there like that and this one goes like this. Now you can see that there is a line in each one of these. These are both the same size. They're 432 millimeters long. I guess technically wide because that's the way the grain's going. But my lines are offset and they're offset by 12 and a half millimeters, which is the width of the, uh, or that's the interval, half of the interval. So you want to have your parts offset that little bit. So that's what gets, that's, that's how you line up your pins and tails. Um, I don't remember how I reached 432 millimeters because that really doesn't make any sense to me. Um, it might have been doing something with cheating the bottom, the bottom tail up or getting the bottom joint to where I wanted it so it was centered with the, the groove for the drawer bottom. And even then we don't even perfectly center that. We actually cheat it down a little bit because the 90% uh, of what we do is insets. So the, uh, we use the bloom undermount slides with the locking devices that have the in and out adjustment and that little in and out adjustment hangs down and if it's right at half an inch sometimes it'll tweak that little adjuster down and it'll snag on the face frame you don't care about that uh so anyway so our front setup board that's going to go where our fronts and backs typically go and it should be kind of a pain in the ass to get in and out of there once it's straight it should slide in Backboard, same thing. I can get it in there. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna go through one more side note on this machine. When you start it up, there's two trigger switches on the back side of it. You want to go ahead and hit the first one every single time you fire it up because that will retract the head away from the template. We've broken a few bits and we've screwed up a few of the fingers that actually hold your sides in the machine. 
So just like you're loading normal parts, you're gonna to wanna to load your sides in and clamp those down first, and then your fronts and back, you're gonna want those clamped in. So what this does is I have a center line marked on the front and back board, and on the back board it's offset that 12 and a half millimeters. With that little V bit, I just took a pencil and made a little tiny mark on it so I can line them up visually. And I will pull this down so we can look at it a little closer perhaps. It is so hard to run a camera like this. That gives you the idea. So right there, I line those two up. And actually right now it looks like they're both pretty flawless. Well, it's not gross. They're lined up pretty well. You get to look at my hand again. There we go. But see, the nice thing with this is, is that you're, you're moving both fences at the same time. So when I initially set this machine up, I was just chasing my own tail in a major way trying to get, get everything where I want to. Everything's counterintuitive for the adjustments. Um, so you gotta go, well, this makes sense, and then do it the other way. Uh, so let's see, that's pretty much it for the setup boards. Dust collection. I did, mod I did modify a couple of things on the dust collection. Um, it comes with a, at least mine came with, it had a two and a half inch port on the back side of the dust hood. That's useless. Um, even the four inch is not great. All I did was I just took a death wheel and a grinder and cut out a oval shaped hole, filed it up a little bit, and then wedged a piece of flex pipe in it and that worked pretty well. Uh, at least as far as getting the hose installed. The other thing that actually helped quite a bit was you can kind of see here, I've got this little plastic shelf. I made this out of UMHW and it does a much better job of directing the chips towards the dust chute in order to pick them up. I'm breaking my rules with my one take approach to this. We covered startup. I think we covered all the adjustments. Um, I don't know if you have any questions about how to set this thing up. Uh, leave them in the comments and have a good day and good luck with your Cantec nightmare to set up.